Welcome to Country Basket Weaving. I'm your hostess, Sandy Atkinson. The basket we'll be working on today is our flower pot. This is a pattern that I had gotten from a library book dated about 1930. The cut and material pattern is as follows. You'll need number four round, cut 13 pieces 30 inches long. Number four round, well you'll need some extra of that. Number three will be our reavers. You'll need one eighth yard of fabric and cut it into two inch strips. To get started, we have a base for this basket. Let me explain the base to you. It is five and three quarters inches in diameter. I have a center hole here that is two and two thirds inches in diameter and that's an option. You could do it either way. The holes are drilled a quarter of an inch from the edge, one and a quarter of an inch apart. And I used an eighth of an inch drill bit so it would accommodate my number four round. I've already taken my 30 inch pieces and have them inserted into my base here. You need to put 12 inches above your base and 18 inches on the other side. We're first going to work on the 12 inch part and that will be the bottom of our basket. What I want you to do, oh, I need this one again. I'm going to come up here and we're going to take a piece of number three round. I want two different end lengths and we're going to put a center crimp in here again so it'll bend without breaking. Take it and we're going to loop it over anywhere one of the spokes on the 12 inch side. To do the twining, remember we're going to take the one on the left side, it goes to the right behind the next spoke and out, which makes this one on the left comes behind the next spoke to the outside again. This is just single twine. The whole basket is done in single twine. There's just a lot of different steps to this basket. Remember the one on the left goes behind. Always picking up the one on the left and of course you must soak your reed so it's pliable. You need to soak it in warm water about three, four minutes. I'm going to go all the way around. When you come to where you started, you're just going to keep right on going. Now I'm starting my second row. You can see right here was my loop. I want you to do a total of three rows. So keep right on twining and do three rows. When you have three rows, it'll look like this. Now this is where we're going to have to pretend a little bit. Just, I haven't done this portion up here. We're still here on the base. And if I can find where I started here, okay. Now I want you to take your needle nose pliers and crimp at the base of each one of these so that they will turn again without breaking. I want you to put a 90 degree turn on those, a 90 degree angle and work with them so they're all going to come straight up at you. And again you're twining, taking the left one behind and to the outside and keep, now they're not going to stay out there right away for you. You're going to have to keep bringing them forward, keep working with them. And I want you to continue this until this base measures straight out two inches. I'm going to do a couple more rows here. Pull these rows a little tight. We don't want to put gaps in them, but not so tight that it makes it buckle. Keep working. See mine are starting to come out now. Keep bringing them down with your left hand. If you're left handed, you can reverse this and it'll work equally well. To add a new piece, I'm going to come in here and clip out where I've added some pieces before so you won't get confused. And let's add a new piece. Taking your number three round, taking a full length of it, mine's a little tangled here. You're going to come in here. This is the piece that ran out. I'm going to pick that piece up. It creates a gap in here, a hole. Stick in your new piece. Hold it in the back with your finger so it won't, you won't pull it out and keep right on going. It's as simple as that. 
We'll go back later and trim off those edges. Keep working this, keep working these out until you have two inches. And I'll go on to the next one. This one we have worked out two inches now. Now, this is where you're going to have to pretend again. This is not finished up here. You don't see this. They're straight up. But we did this to save time. It takes, it takes me about six patterns each time I make one pattern to show on the air. So that's why we kind of wanted to shorten it up a little bit. Anyway, you don't see this part. And here is my two inches out here. I'll turn it upside down so you can see I've got two inches. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add uh, some more spokes. We're going to double up on these spokes in here. I'm going to pull one out and show you what I did. I took my ne knitting needle, inserted it in here, and open up this edge here. Take a piece of your number four round and insert it right down in there. Give it the full two inches. Bring up the end and you're going to cut it off up here so it'll be the length of your original spoke. At that point, we're going to leave this when you have that done and we're going to go back to this basket now. Now again, keep in mind that this base we've already finished, okay? We're going to come up here and we're going to start twining and again, just like we did on the bottom, we're going to do our three rows. Now I'm working on the long 18 inch side and I've done my three rows of twining here. Now what we have to do is double our spokes. We're going to do it just like we did it on the base. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to open it up. You probably won't have to use your knitting needle. It'll still be fairly loose in there. Insert a new piece of number four draw up the end length and cut it so it matches the length of the original spoke. As we twine these new spokes in, we're going to divide them. You can see this here? There we go. We're going to divide them so we're twining each spoke individually. Divide it here. Go ahead and do at least two rows to get these so they're divided. Okay, I'm missing one here. I need to insert another piece, another spoke here. Here we go. It fell out on the floor. And we're going to twine these. And so each row is individual. I'm going to go ahead and do two rows, dividing these up. And then at your second row, when you've finished your second row of dividing these up, I want you to wet it down good again and start flaring these out. I don't want you to crimp them this time. I just want them flared out. Okay? Flare them out. Continue to weave around and keep flaring these out. Hold them out with your left hand as you twine so they flare out. When you get that done, you'll look like this. Can you see how this one's flared out? And this is what, now you should look like this at this point. You should have your base down here, your two inches, and you should have this flaring out. Can you see how it's flaring out? Now we have to double our spokes again. So what we're going to do is the very same thing again. Use your knitting needle if you have to. Open up this space in here. Insert number four round again. Run it right, you need to run it down probably five rows. Bring it up here and clip it off so the ends match up here. Now we're ready to go back and finish our base. So I want you to pick it up and come in here and crimp each one of these double spokes. Just put a good squeeze on your, with your needle nose pliers on each one of your crimps, okay? Go all the way around and do that on each one of your spokes. Come in and get some more, number three round. And again, we're going to start with two different in lengths and a crimp. Now we're going to pick up our basket and loop our number three round over one of the spokes. We're going to twine this out, each one individually, and bend it up as you go. This will create the sides, work around. Spread these two spokes apart. 
They're not going to stay up good for us until we come around to the second row. By the second row, it should start staying a little better. Keep twining around. It's going to tangle. Untangle your ends. Keep dividing these. Come to my close pin over here. I'm going to just simply remove it. Keep pushing these ends up. We want these spokes to go straight up at a 90 degree angle. There's my close pin. Make sure that your ends from the previous weaving are on the inside. And catch them right now. If you run out of a weaver, simply add it by inserting it just like we have done previously. I want you to keep weaving. Keep working these up. Keep weaving. Keep working these up. I want you to keep going. You want to go up about an inch on the side here. About one inch. Here's my second row. Just keep right on weaving. Get up an inch. Okay, we're going to put this one aside. I've got this one up an inch already. It's nice and wet for me. And now we're going to, I'm going to show you how to do this finish loop on here. Starting anywhere, and I'm going to start right here. Can you see where I'm at? I'm going to pick up three in my hand. The one on the far left is going to go behind the two, insert down in the next one over, and run right alongside of it. If I want you to be conscious of the height up here, too. If this doesn't open, again, use your knitting needle, insert down in it. Go behind two, runs right down next to it there. The height on this one needs to be the same as the height on the one we did before it. Behind two and down. The reason I had part of this done already is because I wanted to show you how to end the last two. Stick it down in there. If it's too long, stick it way down here and come in with your scissors and clip it off. The last two on the one to the far left, you're going to put it behind the one that's two over, okay? And insert it behind and then down. The very last one is going to go behind two, this one and this one, and it's going to fit. There'll only be one spoke left for it, one spot left for it, and that's going to fit down there. But in order to keep that pattern going, we have to go behind. And then you have your base done. Okay? I've got my doubles all made up here where I've flared it out. I've got an end. This is where I've ended my twining and simply left the two ends on the inside of the basket. And now I'm going to go to my fabric. I've taken the fabric and I've stripped them into two inch strips and I've made a bias tape out of them here. I simply laid them out on the ironing board, ironed down two sides. Can we see ironed down the two sides and then folded it in the middle and made like a bias tape. So there's really no sewing on it. Give it a good pressing and it'll stay. It should stay for you. Starting on the inside of the basket, place your fabric on the inside. But we can get a shot from the overhead cam here. And we're going to toy, we're going to just go over and under with this fabric. Okay, I am missing some of my spokes, so we'll just, they must have fallen out in my water. These are doubled, okay? And we're just going to weave this over and under all the way around. Now, we started out with 13 spokes, which was an odd number, but we've doubled them, and we've doubled them twice, actually. So we've got an even number now, which means I'm going to have to spiral this fabric. So when I come back to where I started, which is right in here. This one's on the inside. Okay, this one's behind. Now I'm back on the very same pattern that I started with. So I'm going to skip over two. And that'll put me back on an odd pattern. And it's just over and under. We'll go around real quickly and I'll show you that we're going to pick up the next two to skip over in case you've missed the spiral before. See how nicely this fabric's staying together? 
for you ladies or gentlemen that don't sew, this will be an easy one for you to do. No sewing. And I do say gentlemen because the masters used to be the men. I know a lot of women are weaving now, but there's a lot of men out there. And I do have men students, by the way. Okay, I'm back to where I started. If I was to keep going, I'd be on the same pattern. So this time I'm going to skip over this one and this one and keep right on going. So I'm going to skip over two. Last time I skipped over these. This time I'm going to skip over the next two and keep right on going. Go ahead and weave all your material out. It should be at least a good two inches high. It doesn't hurt for it to be even higher than that because we're going to pack it down in order to start the next part. So let me put this one up. Pick out bright colors too. They show up really nice. Look how nice this dark one shows up. Now my fabric got wet because it's been soaking in the water. You can try to keep yours from getting wet if there's a good chance it will get wet though because we are working with water. So you might want to double check and make sure that your fabric doesn't run in the water. What I've done here is I have done all my rows here of the fabric. I've pushed them down tightly. Well, not real tight. There's still room in there, but I've packed them down in. And I've done four more rows of twining. Can you see? There we are. I've done four more rows of twining here and packing those down in. And I've ended my rows up here. Now we're going to do the crosswork that you see there. Taking some more number three. And again, we're going to start with a crimp. Okay. I'm going to cross this one. If we can get the over, there we go, the overhead cam. I'm going to cross this to get started. And I'm going to loop around here so that I'm looped on the one that's going out to the right. Do you see that one? This is just resting. It'll have to wait till I come around. Then I'm going to go here and I'm crossing the one. I'm going to skip one and the one over here I'm crossing behind and that's the one I'm going to twine on. Then I'll twine on the one that I skipped. And keep your spacing about an inch and a half in here is a nice distance. Come over here, skip one. Bring the one behind, the one that's the second one over, and you're going to twine on that piece. Okay? And twine on the next one. We'll do this a couple more times so you get this good. Skip one and come over here. Bring this one around. Twine on this one, the one that's two over, and twine on the one you skipped. See how that forms a cross in here? Okay, come again. Bring that one over. Twine. Now I'm getting tangled up here, so take a second and undo that. And twine that next one. Cross behind. Twine and twine the next one. You need to do two rows at least to hold this together. We'll do a couple more to make sure you understand this. And twine the next. We have an even number of spokes and that's why this will work out. If we had an odd number, this pattern wouldn't work out. So keep that in mind if you want to do this on another basket that you have to have an even number of spokes. Cross behind. Twine the one that you crossed, then twine the one that you skipped. If you wanted to stain this basket, it would be a little bit more work for you, but you could untwine or unweave all of your fabric and stain it and then weave your fabric back in. And I know it would be a lot of work, but it would be worth it. It would make it really pretty. Now, this is the one I started on. Here's my loop. 
Here's the one I left behind. I'm going to pick that one up and twine that one now. Now I'm going to go and keep on going, just doing the regular twine. Okay, go ahead and you need to do at least two rows on that step. Getting kind of packed in over here, aren't we? Okay, on this one I have that top step all finished. Notice I've used a lighter fabric. This has pink and blues in it. It's real pretty. I've just left my ends on the inside. I've left them kind of long because I can always go back and trim them later. Now we're going to finish and do this in braid. Starting up here and starting anywhere again, you're going behind too. Now these are going in different directions, so as you work you'll kind of straighten them up, straighten them up and keep it Keep them at least mentally up and down. You're going to go behind two and to the outside. Now this one wants to shoot off here, but we're going to make sure it bends back. You need your spokes good and wet to do this. Behind two and out. That's how we get this little curve on it. Going behind two to the outside. Always two to the outside. Make sure that your spokes are laying side by side. We don't, this one's twisted, so go back, take a minute, untwist it. Okay. You need lots of room to work with this. Behind two and to the outside. There's one. You don't want to leave all these spokes on the outside. We do a couple of more and then we'll go back and do that final step. Again, make sure they lay flat, one on top of the other. I have a broken one here, but it's going to work right in and I think it's not even going to show. It probably will show, so I may go back later and take that one out and replace it. Okay, I want to go back and make sure we get in that last step. So go ahead and finish that braid out. I'm going to come back here where we started. Now I'm going to pick up one. We're just going one this time. Pick up the one in front of it and insert it in that hole. And you do have a big gap there. You'll want to pull this down a little bit. This one's going to insert right in the next section, right in the next hole. You may have to pick this one up and insert it in there. Okay, this is a very loose braid at the top, but you could use this braid on lots of different baskets. It looks, it looks the same, but entirely different when you do it on something that's done tighter. Pick it up, put it in there. Keep pressing this down. It's a little bit too loose. This looks real good right in here. Can you see that final braid? Then what you can do, we'll do another one here. Then what we need to do, we'll do a few more here. Maybe if I work a little faster we could get most of it done for you. Make sure they lay right on top of each other. I'm going to keep right on going here. Here's that broken one. For time's sake, I'm not going to go back and replace it right now, but I will come in here and cut this out and replace this one here because this is broken. That's not a problem at all. It's very easy to fix. Okay. We'll do this. This is where I ended the first part. But that gives you a good idea what that braid looks like. Now we're going to come in here with our scissors and we're going to trim this out. Can we see here? Don't get these too short. Cut them out. They should. Here is the spoke that goes up. We want this to rest on there, so don't cut it too short or it'll pop out. See how that rests on there? You work this pattern all the way around the basket. And then you've completed your flower pot. You can come back here now 
It'll probably have to be wet and reshaped somewhat. You can come in here and trim off these. Remember how we do that? We come in here and lift this up just gently, put our scissors in there at an angle, and do a trim. It's going to have a, it's going to lay right down in there with the other reed, and nobody's ever going to see that. The end is hidden. Well, there's almost our flower pot done. The basket that we'll be working on next week is our bedside basket. It's a fun one to do. It has pockets in it. It has a center pocket here, so you can do this. This is optional. You can put this in or not. Two side pockets. Good for putting your TV guide in and if you're sick in bed or whatever, chips, pop, whatever. It's a nice little basket. We'll look forward to seeing you next week.